see right here reparations. How you gonna have reparations talk with Caribbeans? That's a good point. That's a that's a room full of Caribbeans. Those are not Black Americans. How are you as a Caribbean gonna invite somebody on a show knowing you don't qualify? You don't qualify. <laughs> we don't need you to have this discussion, sir. But is it strange for him to bring RFK Jr. on his channel? It is. So, well, you think, he was, no, you think it, it was clout chasing? Is it any stranger than having uh, Anthony Fauci on your show? Oh, Joe. I, well, I was on Joe. Look, if I'm honest about Joe Budden, if what I, if what I think turned out to be true, Joe? if what I think turned out to be true, he's a piece of shit. If I find out that he did not take the vaccine and he pushed it with Fauci, Knowing what he know about it, I remember when the dude, one of his co-hosts, Ish, he he said he keeps sending them articles about what's happening with people who took it, and they're like, "Well, people who ain't take it dying, it took dying too." I'm like, "What? You're not even paying attention to the fact you were lied to." Anyway, let's see what RFK Jr. had to say about reparation. One other thing, I spent twenty percent of my time on representing Indians during my career and. United States and Latin America and uh, in Canada. And a lot of the Indian tribes at that point were getting gambling. And there would be arguments, fights within the tribe about how do you distribute the, the gambling money? Do you, and the traditional chiefs would say, do not give it in cash payments because it, it is not, the, the, this, this money belongs to the entire community over the generations. <laughs> and um, and it should be uh, distributed that way. Uh, I, I got the knife. <laughs> what <laughs> the golden child? I I I I I got the knife. Beer in his ghetto. LOL. Our uh, FK's voice is, is hard to listen to. Yeah, he can't be president. Just, just learn this. math, not African American. Thank God. And what we saw is the tribes that that put it into institutions like clinics, scholarships, business loans, microloans, um, factory, building factories, those things, those tribes really flourished. The communities flourished. Right. A sense of community was great. And the, all, all the tribes that did cash payments was a catastrophe. There's no other, if there was no other issue i would be against cash payment reparations but the word reparation means repair and you know i grew up in a jim crow and i saw this was not just the the injury did not end with slavery the injury and the deliberate suppression the institutionalization of poverty in black neighborhoods is uh, systematic it's systemic and so we already know this he says he's against cash payment what's the thing <laughs> You said he sounded like he's taking a shit. He's sounding like he's taking a shit. He's trying to get that last one out. Struggling. It's struggle. The one you relax. Hold, you hold this. You hold yourself down. You're not supposed to screen yourself. Relax. Relax. Because <laughs> you're being there for 17 minutes more. <laughs> Everybody, even uh, people who are Trumpers, who I see all the time because I represent them in lawsuits against big polluters. They, if you talk about business loans to black communities, everybody's for it. Everybody wants business to work and to flourish. And so for me, that would be my approach to, to do everything I can. So basically, I'm um, representing he's against uh, cash payments, but he's for loans. So for that means he can get the fuck on. So that means. <laughs> he can get the fuck on. Uh, on up the road, the dusty road. Going on up, up the dusty road, the dusty trails. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. Yeah. All right. Next up. You know, they made the hair look a little rough. <laughs> I mean, damn. All right. You 800, see how they did us? 800 descendants of enslaved Africans received $50,000. Um, let me get straight to the article. What they saying? Let me show y'all. This is probably gonna be the last slide we're gonna do. Um, all right, let's go. All right, the application for the open road fund opened on June 19th and will close on July 28th. An ambitious wealth building in initiative will provide 800 black residents to of Minnesota, South Dakota, and North Dakota with $50,000 grants. 
yeah. over the next eight years to support economic justice and financial well-being for the descendants of enslaved Africans during the transatlantic slave trade. There is a lot of um, Somalians in Minnesota, and there's not a high black population in South and North Dakota. Uh, that's why they're doing it there. The $50 million open road fund financed by the Bush Foundation, headquartered in St. Paul, is intended to address race-based economic disparities and cultivate black wealth. So I'm a bunch skip- of nothing. So basically all this, they're trying to purport, they're trying to push this notion that they're trying to get reparations. And when you go to the actual website and look at, at how you qualify for it, it's not for descendants of enslaved people, really. It says, uh, well, America. this is grants. These are, yeah, these are the grants. It says, it's grants. How the open uh, road fund works. The Open Road Fund was created to serve black descendants of Atlanta slave trade, especially formerly incarcerated folks, single parents, senior citizens, those living with disabilities. Look, what does it got to do with, with enslaved? What? Uh, That's for op- the trannies. Open Road Fund will award $50,000 grants to at least 800 black residents in the uh, region through 2020, 2031. Applicants must meet the following requirements to be eligible to apply. Be age 14 and up, be a resident of Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota, be a descendant of the Atlantic slave trade, including the Caribbean, North Central, North Central, and South America. Yep. Descendants of formerly enslaved people who were repatriated to Africa are also eligible. Like Rick and the black, the black ink of black the Gambia. Gambia. The black inkers of the Gambia. So what you thinking about this? This is some bullshit. Um, I feel like did you have to break it down in subtitles? If it's for black people, you don't have to say Subgroup, single I mean, parents, incarcerated folks, senior citizens, disabilities, LGBTQ. Everything just sounds like the Fair Housing Act. Now, they have to include everybody. all these subgroups into the conversation. It should just be black. 800 black people. Yeah, like it should be obvious. But they made sure they gave you the pecking order. And it says B14 and up. Um, Do you think it should be uh, under 18 person should be able to get a grant for 50 yeah i mean they might be is this for like going to college i think they're saying they can use it to go to college a 14 year old going to college no they can get the grant and when it's time they can use that money for when they go to college but if you take that money now you aren't you taking it. it from somebody else who's actually of age and wants to go to college and could use that grant who's black well this is same wait so a person who's 14 a black person who's 14 and going who's to college, not going to college right now but they're going to college. It's the same thing as a person who's 19 or 18 in college. It's the same thing. They get going. Not the same thing because you could you may be taking that grant for somebody who is of the age and that wants to go to college. But they're going to it don't they, look they're not getting the grant, so I can't go. Because you're giving it to the but they're going in the future. <laughs> they ain't going. You just assume it ain't gonna go. All right, uh African Caribbean nations joined forces to call for reparations for slavery. Uh, <laughs> they were only able to afford, able to find 800 ADOs people across this. It's not just black Americans no. that can get this. It's anybody that got black skin. <laughs> anybody. Uh, An Indian. Representatives from various African Caribbean entities. Oh, George said, don't forget the music. And we didn't drop the mic today. LOL. We should just do screen yard more than once a month. Not only for sound quality, but for the potential of the mic that didn't get dropped. Oh, we about to drop it now. If y'all see one come up, because I'm not gonna do this last time. I forgot what it was even about. Oh, the alien stuff. We'll talk about that next week. Um oh yeah. Representatives from the various African Caribbean entities joined forces at a historic event this week in the capital of Barbados, Bridgetown, uh, to demand reparations for slavery and its legacy in today's society. We support this, right? Ask for reparations for your country. At this point, I don't know. I don't know if I want to support them. <laughs> They're doing so much reckless shit here. I don't know if I want to Some people don't know them. you. Uh, California State Senator on Reparations. If you can inherit generational wealth, you can, you can inherit generational debt. Amen. Pay for the fathers of your sin, the sins of your father, as always. Uh, President 14 Bi- up seems like a way to have the half cast to apply. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> President Biden establishes Emmett Till and Mammy Till Mobley. Don't know about- National nobody, Monument. Don't nobody want no statue. Like this is just come on, bro. We saw it, holidays we, and and parks and come on, bro. Statues. Everybody else getting. And we we've been talking about this. So we know. We know. It is what it is. 
Thank you.